Have you ever been in a situation where you don't know who to side with in a certain dispute? A sort of disagreement where every single side of a certain problem is completely awful and you hate all of them? Because that's the situation where I'm at right now. See, I was a little bored with working on the video I've been working on for like several months because it's, it's really boring, I'm, I'm kind of sick of it. And uh, I came across this little story that you're uh, seeing on the screen right now. And I decided I really need to share my, uh, my, my thoughts and feelings on this with you, just completely unscripted, okay? Don't even know if I'll show proof on the screen. Not, not really sure what I'll do with this, but I just, you know, I wanna, wanna pour out my heart to you, my friends, about this, about this shit show. Okay, so the first player in this little drama is Graham Linan. I think that's how it's pronounced. You know, the, 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 the Father Ted guy. The guy who used to, I think, write for the IT crowd. Y you know, you probably know him from his uh, ridiculous slap fights with uh, Marcus Meacham, the, I think that's his name, the, the Nazi pug guy. And when Meacham got convicted because the judge said that context doesn't matter, Lenin was really happy about that, so people started digging up, uh, you know, clips of him saying racist stuff on this show when, when he was playing a character and going, you know, if context doesn't matter, then uh, this, you know, you doing a, a racist character is about as much context as uh, this guy making a joke. So, you know, that, that was a lot of fun. But eventually the, the real irony was when he started getting in trouble with the uh, internet trannies. Because Graham, well, Graham, he's a little bit of a... A little bit of a turf, just a, just a bit of a, just a bit of a turf, doesn't really like trannies, got, got a little problem with him. And what happened to him then was that the trannies started calling the police on him for, uh, for committing hate crimes, for talking shit about them. You know, it's re really nice seeing him get a, a taste of his own medicine, pretty amusing. And, you know, everyone starts dunking on him, nobody really likes Graham for, for a variety of reasons, he's kind of an asshole, kind of a stupid jackass. So the, the problem really starts with, uh, with this little live stream situation when Graham finds out that this charity called Mermaids in the UK, they just got a grant from a UK lottery fund. I think it's, it has something to do with the government, not really sure. But they've been given about half a million British pounds to do God knows what. But before they could get their hands on the money, there was a bunch of complaints about this charity and the whole thing was put on hold while an investigation is conducted. So what did Graham do? What did Father Ted do in this situation? What he does, he, he goes over to Momsnet. Now Momsnet, that's a great website. They're uh, supposed to be a site for concerned parents, but they're, uh, they're kind of turfs. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a turf site, don't, don't really like the trannies. Got a, little, got a little problem with the trannies. A little, just a little issue with them. So he leaves them a little uh, note there telling them, listen, you know, there's an investigation going with this charity because there have been some problems with the charity grant being given to them. They haven't gotten their hands on it yet. You should uh, email this guy called Don Ostwick, I think, and, uh, you know, tell him how you feel about this. Now, the post has since been deleted, I think, by the site owners, but this is where shit really kicks off. Because at this point, H Bomber guy finds out about it, and he decides what he'll do is he'll make a charity stream where he plays Donkey Kong for like 48 hours, just to spite Graham, just to spite Father Ted. And you know, that's all good, right? I mean, nobody really <laughs> likes Father Ted, he's uh, a big, fat, slovenly asshole, kinda dumb. So everything's okay, no, no need to continue the story, right? But here, our second person of interest enters the frame, gets up on the stage of this little, little story that's going on. Harry H. Mommer Bruce. A former member of uh, troll group Medicare, you know, he, back in the day, he got into some stuff, you know, harassed some people, maybe sent the nudes of some girl to her friends and family and church and uh, spread some rumors about her. They, there may have been a lawsuit where he was, you know, not named by name, but the British friend of the site's owner was mentioned in the lawsuit. Might have been, almost definitely been him. But that's in the past, okay? He doesn't do that stuff anymore, okay? He's now... Uh, you know, I, I don't like using this word, but it's just a shorthand for you to understand. He's a sort of an mm, SJW sort of type. That's, I don't really like using that word, but y y you get what I mean. He, you, you, you get it. You get it. He's a good, virginal, never hurts anybody, SJW sort of type guy. Ex except he's not very good at that either. You know, mm, I, I had, had a little problems here and there. 
my, my favorite story is how one of the people who helps write his scripts and, uh, and edits his videos told some girl who happened to live close by that he would rape her as a joke. As a joke. And when the girl told Harry that, hey, your, uh, your editor is going to tell me he's going to rape me, Harry, he's a, he's a real, he really listened and believed. And uh, he told her, listen, sweetie, I, I believe you and, uh, you know, fuck off. You, you imagined it. And basically, he eventually he banned him. Eventually, he got rid of him when he got tired of getting shit for it. But other than that, great guy. So, but to, to, to be clear, to be clear, I like Harry, okay? I think he's all right. You know, his videos, his videos, they got some real good production quality. You know, he builds sets. He, he really puts in the effort. So I like the guy. And you know, his, his ugly face and receding hairline make me feel a lot better about my ugly face and, uh, well, my hairline isn't receding. I, I found a few gray hairs recently. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, I, I, why did I even bring this up? Anyways, I, you know, I disagree with him politically. And I think his videos are intentionally misleading and dishonest. But then again, I'm the guy who tries to convince people that Steven Universe is part of a massive conspiracy to turn their kids trans because it's funny to me. So I'm not really in a position to criticize other people. All I'll say about Harry's videos, they remind me sort of of that one article that's been going around lately where uh, the, the racist hacker Weave, he uh, gives people on the Daily Stormer pointers on how to use comedy to try to propagandize people. That's more or less what me and Harry and Weave do. We're, we're from the same corner of the internet originally. The only real difference is that I don't actually try to propagandize people. I just, you know, I just say all sorts of bullshit to annoy them for my own entertainment. But, you know, that's a bit off topic. So, I like Harry. Like I said, I like Harry. Okay? And I don't really like Father Ted. So, that sells it, right? Not an issue. Harry's not so bad. Graham and Mumsnet are a bunch of cunts. So you know who to side with, right? Not a problem. But here, the plot thickens. Because there are some problems with, uh, with this charity. But before we get to that, before we get to the big twist, I'd really like to mention that the, the charity got, the, the charity stream, got a lot of attention. A bunch of people jumped in. And my favorite part was when AOC jumped in. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on the stream. And I gotta tell you, as a Jew, as a Jew, I love Cortez. Absolutely adore her. She's been doing great the last few months. Really warms my heart. You know, first she called Israel occupied Palestine, then admitted she doesn't know what she's talking about. Then she compared uh, Mexicans, illegal migrants to Jews fleeing the Holocaust. That was fine. Then she tried to flip that by pretending that she's part Jewish, even though she doesn't really have any specific Jewish ancestors. Like, According to, to this tweet, it, it seems like she's basically just saying that everyone in Puerto Rico is probably Jewish, so I guess that includes her. That's what I'm getting out of this. She's about as Jewish as Elizabeth Warren is Native American. And then, a, a few weeks back, she, she, you know, she shows up at the Women's March. Just as the, the, the three leaders, three of the four leaders, get uh, exposed for being giant anti-Semites who might also be stealing money. You know, and someone comes up to her and says, hey, hey, hey. Ocasio, hey Ocasio Cortez, what, what do you feel about this? Do you feel that this is a is a great place for you to be right now with with the girls who uh, who support a guy who says the Jews are termites? And she's like, you know, we don't want to be negative. This is a positive, and let's focus on the positive. Let's not focus on the whole Jews are termites thing. This is a great place for me to hang out right about now. So, like I said, really like Ocasio Cortez. I mean, if if things don't work out in the U.S. and politics, she can always just move to the U.K. and uh, join labor with Harry. By the way, I'm bringing Harry into this too because he happens to be the guy who came up with the beautiful term S-Jews. See, it's, it's spelled S and then Jews. It's, it's a very little, clever little play on words he thought up a few years ago where he decided to dunk on those, on those mean anti-SJWs by saying instead of SJW, he said S-Jews. So he's, he's comparing them to to the Nazis and himself to a, 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 a Jew in, in the Holocaust. It's very tasteful. I Personally, I'd like to thank everyone in the uh, sort of YouTube SJW community for, uh, for using that little, little turn of a phrase, that little terminology that it was very tasteful, really warmed my heart. Anyways, but l let's get back to the point. So I said there was an investigation, okay? What, did I, what was I talking about? Why would anyone 
want to investigate this great trans charity like helpline that they're awesome what, what possible problem could there be well this is where things get a little interesting see i think harry may have had some uh, good intentions probably but he may have picked the single worst trans charity there is on earth because even people i know who are trans don't really like this charity because they have some some little problems tiny problems itty bitty problems okay well, the first problem is that maybe mm, nobody in their staff is actually knows what they're talking about. They're, um, they, they're CEOs and bankers and lawyers. No, no doctors. But they do work with doctors. They have great doctors who they refer to. Okay? I mean, there, there may be some problems with the, the doctor's credentials. Small problems. Uh, well, one of them, the, the counselor they direct people to is a, you know, former stand-up comedian and motivational speaker. But that's fine. And another doctor that they refer to, they used to refer to her, but they had to delete her name from the site. Well, uh, she promised people that she would give their children hormone blockers after a four-hour meeting with them, counseling meeting, on the day of the meeting. Which is, you know, the NHS says don't do that, but she said she will, so they, they put it on the site and then someone found out about it, so they took it off the site. And there's a, there's a third doctor who, who may have had her license suspended. And the doctor, the, the second one, and the counselor, well, they're both trans, so no bias here. Absolutely no chance that they have a horse in the race, maybe, just a little bit. Just no, not implying anything. The, the third doctor, she's, mm, she's great, okay? She is the best doctor to refer people to. Well, she, she had some problems with the law. Little problems, okay? Uh, well, she had... Uh, one clinic that was investigated because she was giving hormone replacement therapy to 12-year-olds against the law. And uh, another one where her website would give you prescriptions in 17 seconds to literally anyone. Just click a button and get a prescription drug. So that, that was okay. And she's under some investigation and, and maybe had her license suspended currently and no longer allowed to treat trans children unsupervised. Um, I have followed all GMC good medical practice and um, I said uh, if you follow good medical practice and you're a good doctor then you don't find yourself in front of the GMC. Um, on my way home from that very meeting where I said that I had my first GMC um, investigation on my door doorstep. <laughs> and since then I had f three more. But that's okay, because her husband, okay, her husband can still give you any kind of drugs you need. They work together, and it's the same clinic, so they direct to, to her husband now. And that's okay, even though her husband is, uh, well, he's a, he's, a, he's a gastroenterologist. But that's fine. A gastroenterologist is qualified to deal with this. It's basically the same thing. It's fine. He also happens to believe that, you know, you don't need to give children any sort of psychological evaluations before giving them drugs he has a youtube video about it so so maybe just maybe they the, the this charity directs people to people who will uh, give their children drugs illegally sometimes with zero sort of testing just but that's normal that's fine i'm it's fine it's okay it's okay it's fine okay here here's a here's a great tweet by that they that they retweeted this charity that they believe that you should give children basically hormone blockers, puberty blockers on demand with absolutely just, you know, a kid walks in, asks for them, don't need to, don't need a doctor, just, just hand it over to them. That's fine. No danger here. And they have some, some great cohorts, some great, they're in great company. They happen to work together with another charity, great charity, helps out, you know, gay people and sex workers and victims of sexual abuse, children who are victims of sexual abuse, and nothing bad has ever happened with this charity, except for the fact that turns out that according to this charity's rules, the people who work there are allowed to have sex with the people that they're helping, so that's normal, not, not exploitative at all, and just, you know, a small tidbit of information, one of their trustees uh, he, he's currently in jail for molesting a child, but that's fine. You know, I can't blame them for what other people do. 
And it's not like they partnered with this other charity after all of this happened, except they definitely they actually did. After all of this controversy, they decided to partner with them. Okay, but that's not Mermaid's fault. Okay, I can't hold them responsible for what other people do. I can't hold them accountable for things that they do, on the other hand. So so let's let's get to that. Let's get to the best part. Okay. So at least on on at least two occasions, uh, they've been accused of helping parents transition children against their will. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know, it's their word against, against the father who says that the children didn't want to transition in two of these cases. It's just their word against theirs. Except in, in, in the second case where it's their word against the word of the father and the judge who said that they're not allowed to be in contact with the child ever again because the mother according to their advice probably kidnapped the child and forced him to live as a girl against his will but but that's fine because the the, the ceo of mermaids had a brilliant response to to this ruling um she she said that the judge is a basically a bigot transphobe that doesn't know anything even though he's actually an expert and helped write a book about lgbt rights well LGB rights. Maybe, he, maybe he's pro-gay and just doesn't like the T in the LGBT. Or maybe she should have actually googled who she was talking about before accusing him of stuff. Oh, and one more thing they did uh, was threaten to sue one of the newspapers that was reporting on it. So that's normal. That's fine. Oh, and also just a small little detail. A third person accuses them of contributing to driving his son to suicide. But that's, that's a that's a small detail. That's fine. That's normal. And the CEO, well, she's a real character. She's, she's pretty great. She possibly broke the law taking her son to the US when he was 12 to get hormone replacement therapy from the only doctor who would, she could, probably the only doctor she could find who was willing to do this, who happens to, you know, dress like a, like a cowboy. But that's fine. Very credible. <laughs> Very normal. No, but really, I looked to this doctor and he's fine. You know, he's actually a, a pretty well-known doctor. Not really a lot of problems with him. Uh, except for the fact that he's one of the first people who, in the world who was willing to give hormone blockers and hormone replacement therapy to minors. And uh, he believes that being transgender is 100% immutable and biological. No, no social factors into this. But in 2013, even he had to admit that about 10% of the people who come to his clinic are just autistic. So, so there's a small problem there. A little bit of a, little bit of a problem. Anyways, back to the, to the issue. Uh, then the CEO possibly broke the law again by going to Thailand when he was 16, when she found like a single doctor who was willing to give her son sex reassignment surgery when he was 16. By the way, after she did that, soon after the uh, government in Thailand changed the law so that this sort of shit doesn't happen again, he, her son is literally the youngest person to ever transition, and th th that's completely normal. That's <laughs> nothing weird went on there at all. But, but that's fine, okay? By the way, I, ke I keep saying she possibly broke the law. I'm, I'm not really sure if she did or not. I mean, I know that in the UK, going overseas to give your daughter female genital mutilation to escape Britain's laws, that's illegal. I don't know if it's exactly the same with uh, illegally transitioning your son before he is legally allowed to do that. There's a bit of a similarity there, but you know, it's the UK. It's hard to, hard to tell what they would or would not prosecute, okay? It's, it's the country where you can gang rape a 12-year-old and walk free, and uh, you can go to jail for selling someone a plastic butter knife a day before their 21st birthday. So, yeah, it's hard to tell. It's it's the crazy, wacky world of the, of the British Isles. Really great. Things are going great over there. But anyways, she then went to Thailand a third time on his 18th birthday to... Well, at this point it was her. On her 18th birthday to give her a breast implant. But to be fair, to be fair, her son may have actually needed the surgery, okay? As she tells it, her son was, you know, constantly suicidal, tried to kill himself like a million times knew he was a girl since he was like five years old, and might, this might be a case where this was actually necessary. Uh, one weird thing about her story, she says that when he was four years old, he turned to her and said, God made a mistake, I was supposed to be a girl. 
So that's a little bit of a weird thing for a four-year-old to say. A little too specific, it's like one of those woke eight-year-old posts on Twitter. That's a bit weird, makes me question her story a little bit. And, uh, you know, a slight similarity to those mothers who they have been accused of uh, helping transition their, coerce their children into transitioning. I'm not accusing her of anything, might be completely fine. Maybe her son actually needed that. What I don't think he needed is for her to take him on his 18th birthday to get a boob job, and I think that was televised. <laughs> That's a little weird, and he's also uh, a trans, she's also a transgender beauty queen now. Uh, seems a little bit like attention-seeking, a little bit weird, but okay. Now, d don't, don't mention to her, it's not nice to tell her that she may have broken the law. It's especially not a good idea because uh, she'll call the cops on you. Yeah, she, she calls the police on anyone who publicly talks about this. Anyone in the UK, so I'm safe. She, she admits she can't actually do anything outside the UK uh, because mermaids help train the police. So there's a bit of a connection there. Not, 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 not Orwellian, not weird at all. Just, you know, don't mention it or she'll bring you up on hate crime charges. Now, the worst part of it is that the law might actually be right. Because, she, and this is something she admits in an interview, uh, because she gave her son the puberty blockers too soon, she admits in an interview that his, his penis was too small, and when, the, uh, when they tried to do the surgery, they couldn't really do it all the way because there was nothing to work with. They need to invert the penis, and there was nothing to invert. So she literally ruined her own son's chance of being properly transitioned by rushing to, get, to illegally give him hormone replacement therapy when he was 12. The surgeons around the world do something called penile inversion, where they basically use the skin from the penis to create the vagina. And she hadn't developed through full puberty, so to not put too fine a point on it, there wasn't much there to work with. <laughs> Sorry, Jackie, she'll hate that. <laughs> and this is something I read, I don't know if this is true, some guy said it, I haven't checked it before I started recording. But apparently if your penis is too small when you transition, they, cr they create um, what I like to call the stink hole, where they just... For some reason, the, the, the bowel juices are too close to the... I don't know if this is true, I'm just repeating what I was told. The bowel juices are too close to the fake vagina, so it constantly smells like shit. That's something that someone said. I don't know if it's true, but if it is, it's both sad and hilarious. Anyways, another interesting incident that happened with the charity is a fictionalized documentary about the CEO's life. Again, a little bit attention-seeking. She was the head advisor on this, uh, on this little... TV drama, it was called, I think, Butterfly or something, and there was a little bit of a problem there. It ends with, it's better to have a, uh, a straight trans daughter than a dead gay son who's alive. Never mind, never mind, I should have, I really should have scripted this. So, so Tavistock told them, listen, don't do that anymore, but mm, they still do that. They are still getting into trouble for, uh, for not following best practices in regards to uh, trans, like, to, to the, in regards to anything they do because they have no idea what they're doing, okay? So they're still basically helping drive trans kids to, to suicide, even though trans kids suicide isn't really that prevalent, despite what they claim, because they, it's, it's another story. Uh, they happen to completely misunderstand a statistic and said that 50% of trans kids attempt suicide, even though, according to, to Tavistock, 50% uh, of trans people attempt suicide, but with kids, the the number is like less than 1%, so that was a lie. And also, a suicide hotline told them the same thing. Don't do that sort of shit, because trans kids will watch it and try to commit suicide. And even after someone secretly recorded one of their sessions and he brings this up, instead of saying, you know, maybe we'll stop repeating this, she just, the, the CEO just gets mad at the guy. There's a secret recording and it's a little, a little bit, a little bit, it gets a little heated when he brings this up. It depends on the level of dysphoria and how they're coping with that. 
But not all trans kids have got dysphoria, I think, as you were saying. Not, not all, but most. So when it said, oh, but most, all right, because you said that 45% of trans kids have tried to kill themselves. I didn't say that. Oh, no, so no, it's on the, on the slide I there. I showed a snippet from the Stonewall report and suggested that you might want to get it and read it. Yeah, I, I, I would exercise... Please don't put words on No, I'm not, I'm, I'm quoting words from your PowerPoint. I'm just very, very cautious about that because we're now... In a moment where we're thinking that trans kids have all got dysmorphia, but you, you said very casually earlier that no, they don't. Not all trans people have got dysmorphia. That's brilliant. But we need to know what we're talking about because if you don't, and if many trans young people don't, then they don't relate to that statistic. That statistic is about young people who might have all kinds of comorbidities and be. I've been asked to come here for an hour. Yep, sorry. Share some knowledge. There is absolutely no way yeah. I can share a huge level of knowledge in an hour. I can give you an overview. Gotcha. I can give you some signposting and I can give you some basic information. That is all I can do. I understand that and appreciate your time. Thank you very much. But all right. I, I've been. What else does, uh, does the UK Mermaid charity organization believe in? What else? Well, uh, they believe that. Uh, Giving hormone, tra hormone treatment or surgery on demand at any age is a good idea, even though her son's dysfunctional vagina proves that it is not a good idea. That you, They, they still advocate for this, despite what happened to her own son. By, by the way, it's worth noting that they want these surgeries on demand, and as a prerequisite, they want no psychological evaluations before you give the kids the surgery. Just... If a kid says he's trans, just immediately give him the surgery. Don't even ask. Don't even wait for nothing. Just do it. Uh, they believe that, well, at least they say they believe that hormone blockers are completely reversible, that hormone replacement therapy is harmless, even though both of these things are either unproven or easily falsifiable. Uh, they believe that accidentally transitioning kids. If you have a son or you have a daughter and you uh, give them surgery and it turns out they're not trans, that's fine. According to, to Mermaid, here's a, here's a real tweet, I'll put this one actually on the screen. Here they tell you that, you know, being trans isn't a problem. So if you accidentally transition one of your children, you shouldn't worry about it. Stop worrying about being sure about this. Just, just transition them as fast as you can. Don't even ask them. You, you see, if, if a kid wants to be trans and you don't let him, that's horrible. That's a crime. That's awful. But if your kid is not trans... And you give him irreversible surgery. You can't go back if you give him irreversible surgery and he is forced to live as the wrong sex. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with being trans. There's, there's a problem with being trans and not getting the surgery. But if you aren't trans and you get the surgery, that's fine. Even though, you know, she, she says her son tried to kill himself multiple times because people made fun of him for being trans. But it's okay if you accidentally make your, uh, your son trans. You should, don't worry about it. There are no negative consequences. You know what, uh, we, what you should do? If you suspect your son is gay, just transition him. That's also something that they believe in, that all gay people are trans. That's a, a real thing. They, uh, they made a tweet saying that, um, that the definition of, uh, of not being trans is that you are comfortable in your own body or comfortable with the sex that you were born and that you are attracted to the opposite sex. Okay? And then people, um, people told them, listen, does that mean that you think that all gay people are transsexuals? And they try, they try to walk it back, they try to correct it, but they still refuse to make a tweet where they explicitly say that you can be not trans while simultaneously being gay. And this isn't the only time that this has happened. Apparently there was a tweet that they've deleted, but people say that, they, that they've seen it. I, I stutter really a lot. I should have scripted this. That people, well, anyways, there's a, there used to be a tweet where they say, um, that where the CEO apparently, allegedly, says that, you know, it's okay that she transitioned her son because he would have been gay anyway. <laughs> That's at least what I was told that the tweet says. No one can find it. Another thing that no one can find is a video that has been expertly deleted from the internet where someone from the charity, presumably the CEO, uh, says that gay people are deviant, so it's okay for them to, it's better for them to transition. Again, I... No one has a copy of it, but people who've seen it say that that's what she said. So, you know, that, uh, that should work out pretty great for Harry, who's apparently now gay or, or bisexual. 
I don't know, I don't follow the H-Bomber guy lore, but he's, he seems to be on the regular trajectory of every left-wing YouTuber, where uh, first they're straight and then they're like, maybe I'm gay, and then at some point they, uh, they're either trans or if they're, they're lazy, then they're non-binary because they don't want to have the surgery. I, this, this happens a lot, and I will bet anyone $20 that within three years, Harry will come out as uh, non-binary. And also, Kevin Logan will be a, a beautiful woman. Unless, unless Harry is already coming out as non-binary, in which case I'm not giving you anyone, I'm not giving anyone money. Fuck you, it's my $20. Okay, fuck you. Really, really should have scripted this. I, I really should have scripted this little, uh, this little video. Should have, should have thought of what I'm going to say before I said it. But okay, so, so let's wrap this up. So this is the position that I'm in. Who, who do I root for in this situation? I mean, wh what is the, the best outcome? Sh should I hope that Mermaid doesn't get their funding? Because they probably shouldn't. I mean, if you can find that email, you really should email the guy from that lottery fund to not give him any money. But is that what I should hope for? Sh should I hope that Harry and whoever else was involved with this gets a bunch of shit for this? Should I hope that Graham and Momsnet get, like, a bunch of shit? By the way, the charity tried to report Graham to his, uh, to his agent for some reason. But who... Wh 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 what is the, the best outcome? Who do I side with? Is it Hairless Harry? Sh should I side with the, the turd maids? Cunsnet, Red Cortez, Graham Le Graham Le Okay, I, I can't think of a of a of a of a pun with his name, but it, it, just don't I don't like him either, okay? And I don't know what to do. But I sat down and I had a big think. And I thought to myself, who do I side with in this situation? And I thought long and hard, and I finally found an answer. And let me let me tell you about it. He's the leader of the bunch. And you know him well. And he's finally back to kick some tail. Here, here, here we go. 